Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to a new video. I've already written a program and I've converted that into a function. But before I do that, right, I just wanted to, you know, execute this program line by line on the right hand side so that you can see what's going on. So you can see that I'm importing my sys object, uh, importing sys, which is, I don't think I'm using it anywhere. I might, might not be, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an important module. I'm loading it here. And then I'm using NumPy and then I'm using Cantor. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a gas object. Now here, if you remember, I said that CT, uh, the, the module has a solutions class. Okay, and then I'm using that solutions class to create an instance object. So again, these things will be clear once I show you a different example. I've, I've, I've written a simple, uh, an easier example that kind of explains some of these concepts. All right, so now I've created this gas, gas object and then now what I'm doing is I'm setting the temperature, pressure and concentration that is an attribute for the gas object. Okay, so TP and species dict. So in this case, I don't have species dict. So what I can do is I can uh, provide it manually. So if you remember, it's, it needs to be a dictionary. So I, I provide CH4 and you know say one one mole of ch4 and then one nine one thing i need to do is for the keys i need to use quotes remember for dictionaries i need to use keys uh quotes uh, I, for, sorry for remember for dictionaries we have key and value right it's key and value pair and we'll have o2 i need two moles so let me just type it in here and then 7.52 okay so now I've created this gas object. So now what I can do is, right, I can create a reactor object that takes this gas object. Okay, it uses this gas object and it creates a new object called R. So let us execute the program on the right hand side. So I've executed this. And then if you type in help of R, Oh, temperature is not defined. Yeah, so I need to define my temperature. So let us say temperature is 1000, um, 1250 Kelvin and pressure is five times 101325. So five atmospheres. Okay, so now if I run the program, it should run. And if I do help of R, you know, just like our other uh, functions, I mean, just like, sorry, just like before when I use the help command, it tells me what are the methods what are the like what are the when i say methods functions what are the functions and what are the variables that this particular uh, object supports so and here you can see that there are also some programming examples that has been given uh, given and you can see that for each method now this is what you call as a constructor we'll talk about what a constructor is you can see the initial parameters and this is the class ideal gas reactor from which we are creating an instance object. So an instance object is basically like you're taking that class, which is, which is, which is your template. You know, the class is basically a template and you're creating an instance of it. You're, you're copying the template. Essentially that's what we're doing. And this copy is what you call as an object, which in this case is R. Remember ideal gas reactor is the class and R is an instance of it. It's not the other way around. Once I create my reactor, let us create a reactor net object. And you can see that as you know, as you slowly start learning a little bit more about objects, the program the program is very easy to read. You create a reactor, and then you create an instance object of reactor net, and then you basically pass the reactor to it. Now, in addition to this. If you go to Cantor's documentation page, the methods and attributes have been described properly. So you can read there and you can just, you know, use your browser to search for something that you care about. So typically how people uh, get the functions that they want. For example, here, how do I know what I need to choose is I basically search for Cantor reactor type and then it takes me to the class that basically contains those different methods. And I just read through the manual and then figure out Okay, maybe this is the method that I want. 
you know, it's very straightforward unless you wrote the class. Because if you wrote the class, you know what the methods and attributes are. Uh, else you have to use the help command or if you have a browser, you know, just open up a browser and then look, just search for Cantera, Reactor, Net, Class, and then you can see all the methods and attributes that are supported. That is another way to do it. So here, once I have my sim object, you know, I'm going to set, you know, my initial time equal to zero, which is not a big deal. And then see, uh, the other thing that I'm doing here is, for now you can just ignore this extra parameter. Just pretend that that, that that does not exist. So what does this command do? Yes, we are creating an instance of solutions array class, which takes the gas as an argument, the gas object. No, uh, okay, we are taking the gas object and we're passing that as an argument. And then what is the solutions array, right? It's to answer that question, right? You cannot just guess it just by the name. I mean, to a, to a certain extent you can, but then if you have to get the proper description, you need to read about it. So in this case, what the solution array does is, it gives you an object that describes the states of your simulation object, okay? Now, sorry, the states of your reactor object. Now the reactor has different states, right? At, if you remember from the PowerPoint, at each time, the reactor's state is different. It has different temperature, pressure, and so on. And we need to store that data, right? Now you can store that data by regular arrays, but the states object, which is an instance of the solution array class, gives us a very nice way to store the states. And I'll show it to you. Okay, so what I can do here is, uh, let's open up, let's start the time loop. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to be integrating the system for 1000 time steps. <clears throat> and each and every step, I'm going to be requiring the solution at, you know, at an increment of one E minus three, one millisecond. So, uh, so first, the minimum time to which I'm integrating the system is one E minus three at a given time. So one E minus three is the time to which we are integrating the system. Okay. So if you remember sim dot advance, what did I say? It's going to integrate your system to that time. So the time that we provide here is not the DT value. So that is the time up to which we are integrating the system at once. All right. And then when you integrate it, what Cantra does is it basically uses its own time step, depending on how the stiff the system is to get to that time. And then at that time, whatever the state is, it's going to give you that state. Is this point clear? So if I go back to this PPT, see, this is your initial reactor. It's at a given state. Now what I'm doing is I'm integrating this reactor net to one millisecond. Okay, that is the time, that is the final time that I want. And in order to get there, what Cantor is doing is it's choosing the time step. So let me see if I can pull up the program that we wrote last time. All right, we have a system of ODE. And then what we are basically doing is we have an end time, okay? My end time is 10,000 seconds. I've specified the end time. But then in order to get there, I'm using a step size. So this H is something that I'm setting up here, right? Now what I'm saying is Cantor takes care of the step size by itself. It figures out what is the right time step uh, so that it can, you know, um, balance runtime versus accuracy. You know, there's a trade off there. So Cantor will do that. Cantor will figure out H and what you're providing to Cantor is the end time. Okay. So that is what we're doing here. So the time that we are specifying here is equivalent to the end time that we specify and the step size is actually hidden from us. And then what I'm going to do is, I'll just copy this guy. I'm appending, you know, states dot append of R dot thermostate. I'm just appending the state of my reactor. Now, when I say a state of my reactor, it contains all the data, right? It contains temperature, pressure, concentration, any other properties like volume and so on. All right, so now let's just run the program. All right, you can see that the program completed. And now uh, if I print states, it's going to print the name of the object, right? 
what I can actually do is print states dot t. And you can see that I automatically get an array for it, right? So if you think about it, that is the, that is the advantage of using the states object. If you're if you're using a regular array, right? So for example, um, if I'm using a regular array called state temperature, 